Light is an electromagnetic wave. Yes, we perceive the oscillations of an electric field as light. When these oscillations all occur in one plane only, the light is said to be polarized. In this video, we will look at how light can be polarized and what is the effect of this operation on the energy it carries. In other words, get ready to derive Malus law. If you are not familiar with polarization, I recommend that you check this video first, where I explain in detail what it means to say that light is polarized. That said, now let's dive in. Imagine a polarized beam of light for which the plane of polarization is making an angle theta with a vertical. This beam of light is going towards a polarizer, which has an axis of polarization which is vertical. So, having a plane of polarization like this means that the oscillations of the light are within this plane. I could try <laughs> to represent them kind of like this. You see, I represent here the double arrow. That is the incident light in the polarizer. What passes through will be the component of this incident light, which is parallel to the axis of polarization of the polarizer. So this in red. Therefore, what comes out will be oscillating in a plane which is containing the axis of polarization, so this plane. Now, we can have a better perspective if we position ourselves in front of the polarizer. So I will make another drawing here. By taking an observer position which is facing the polarizer, this is what we get. The green double arrow here is the light going towards the polarizer, and the polarizer is between this light and the observer position. So when this green light passes through the polarizer, only the component parallel to the polarization axis of the polarizer will pass. So this, in red, which is the light coming out here. Now the oscillation is in a plane that contains this axis. When we represent a double arrow like this, we are also representing the amplitude, the amplitude being the length of half of it. So here this is A0, the amplitude of the incident polarized beam. And what comes out will be A, the amplitude of the beam that comes out of the polarizer. I recognize a rectangle triangle here with an angle theta. So it's easy to calculate the output amplitude from the input amplitude. A is A0 cosine of theta. Waves carry energy, and this energy is directly related to the amplitude. For example, take this wave, and this one. In your opinion, which of these two waves carry more energy? Well, obviously this one, right? Because it has a bigger amplitude. Light is a wave, so light also carries energy. If you want to know how it does this, check this video. What we notice there is that A equals A0 cos theta. Cos theta is between 0 and 1. So if there is an angle between the plane of polarization of the incident wave and the axis of polarization here, meaning if theta is not 0, that means that A is smaller than A0. The amplitude of the output wave will be smaller than the amplitude of the incident wave. Therefore, the energy carried by the output wave will be less than the energy carried by the input wave. Before we move forward, we need to talk about the way physicists quantify the energy carried by light, a quantity called intensity. And then I'll be back and I will show you how to calculate the change of the energy carried by polarized light when it passes through a polarizer. Consider a lamp that emits 100 joules of light energy every second that is a power of 100 watts. Now imagine that you place this lamp above a surface so that it illuminates uniformly 10 meter squares of that surface. You could say that each meter square receives 10 joules every second. In other words, that the power received by each meter square is 10 watts. Now approach the lamp closer to the surface. Naturally, the surface receiving the light will be smaller. For example, 4 meters square. 
but it will also be brighter because the light energy received is more concentrated. It would be now 100 watts divided by 4, that is 25 watts per meter square. The brightness you perceive is related to the light power received per square meter. It is a kind of density of energy applied on a surface, and this is what physicists call intensity. The relationship between the amplitude of a wave and the intensity it carries is the following. The intensity of a given wave is proportional to the square of its amplitude. I can rewrite this differently. I can write that the intensity of a given wave is equal to a constant multiplied by the square of its amplitude. Let's play a little bit with this equation. I'm going to square both sides. A squared equals a0 cos theta squared. I can develop a squared equals a0 squared cos squared of theta. I'm allowed to multiply two sides of an equality by the same constant, so I can rewrite this ka squared equals ka a0 squared cos squared of theta. And I'm pretty sure that you recognize the terms. Here, this is I, the intensity of the wave coming out of the polarizer. And this is I0, the intensity of the wave coming in the polarizer. Giving me I equals I0 cos squared of theta. This is called Malus law. Let's do a quick exercise for you to get a feel on how to use Malus law. You have a polarizer here, which has an axis of polarization, which is the vertical. You have an incident beam of polarized light for which the uh, plane of polarization is making an angle of 60 degrees with the vertical. The incident uh, intensity is 100 watts per meter square. What is the intensity of the light that comes out of the polarizer? Straight application, I0 is 100. Cos squared of the angle between the axis of polarization and the plane of polarization of the incident light, so 60 degrees. Cos of 60 is 1 half, so that's 100 by 1 half squared, so 100 by a quarter, so 25 watts per meter squared. What about if the incident light is unpolarized? What happens when it passes through the polarizer? For that, we should remember what is unpolarized light. Unpolarized light is just a construct of many polarized rays. In unpolarized light, you can have some waves which are oscillating horizontally, vertically, that add up to some which are oscillating with an angle, and another one, and another one, and it's a combination of all this that gives you unpolarized light. So, if you want to calculate the intensity of the light that comes through the polarizer, you can use Malus law. The first thing you realize is that only the contributions which are parallel to the axis of polarization pass through. So, the light that comes out will be polarized with a plane of polarization containing the axis of polarization of the polarizer. What about the intensity? Well, you can consider each of the contributions. Right? You apply a value slow for each of these polarized rays, sum what you get, and then take the average. The result of such an operation is that if you have an incident intensity which is I0, what comes out will be I equals I0 over 2. Basically, the intensity is cut in half. I'm currently working on a video that will prove this result to you. So stay tuned. Okay, before I close this video, let's do a quick exercise that allows you to summarize everything I said in this video. An unpolarized beam of light passes through two polarizers. The first polarizer has an axis of polarization, making an angle of 30 degrees with the vertical. The axis of polarization of the second polarizer is just the horizontal. The incident intensity of the light is 200 watts per meter square. The question is, what is the intensity of the light coming out of the second polarizer? Pause the video. Try to do it yourself. 
And yeah, you don't need a calculator. You can do everything in your head. The light that comes out of the first polarizer will be polarized along the axis of polarization of this polarizer. So the plane of polarization will make an angle of 30 degrees with the vertical and 60 degrees with the horizontal. The intensity coming out of the first polarizer will just be this divided by 2 because the incident light was unpolarized. So here you have 100 watts per meter square. For the second polarizer, you see that the incident beam is already polarized. So you can just apply Malus law. I equals 100 cosine of the angle between the polarization plane of the light and the axis of polarization. So here, 60 degrees, which is square. So that is 100. Cos of 60 is 1 half. 100 by 1 half squared, 25 watts per meter square. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it was useful to you. If so, like, subscribe and smash this notification bell. It really encourages me to make new videos. In the meantime, I wish you the best and I'll see you soon for the next episode of Physics Made Easy. Ciao.